Mm-hmm. Sam Altman admits OpenAI is a little bit scared of ChatGPT and says it will eliminate many jobs. Oh, remember at first? They're like, nah. Uh. ChatGPT. ChatGPT. Chat. It's friendly. It's going to help humans. Mm-hmm. It's here to help you. We're here to help humans. Uh-huh. That's all we want to do. Sam Altman admitted he's a little bit scared. The CEO told ABC News that people should not trust me. <laughs> he also said artificial intelligence will take over many jobs but could lead to much better ones. This has always been the angle. It's like, hey, you don't want to do that anyway, right? Yeah, let the robot handle it. You don't want to do that. And then everybody just keeps answering yes. And Because the, the, the one thing I've realized is it doesn't matter the job, Will. It doesn't matter eventually or maybe not eventually, but I, I, I should say or I think or I, I my intuition is and people can disagree with me in the chat if my intuition is completely off base here. All jobs have some element in it that you don't like like the, or that on that any can be replaced by AI or on any eventually. on any given day. You're just like, Meh, I don't feel you know what I'm saying? Yeah. This idea that you're going to find a better job because AI is doing the, the other ones is a little bit flimsy, I would say. Because what is a job? you got to start thinking about what a job is. What is work? Is it, can it, all, should it, can it, is it possible for it to always be gratifying and meaningful at the same time? Or does it require some element in it which is difficult? Mm-hmm. Like, is it the difficulty in and of itself that makes the work meaningful? To an extent, and depending on circumstance, I I do agree that you can like contributing and working hard in one direction, possibly more than another one. But in my personal experience, you still bump into moments where you need to kind of bear down and you need to push a little bit more, even if it's uncomfortable. Yeah, for the sake of growth or discovery or otherwise. It's just the nature of being a human. Mm-hmm. Is uh, appears to appears to be the case to me, and then afterwards, if you are able to push through, you the you, there is a euphoric experience that comes of a, as a consequence of going beyond the previous threshold. Yeah, like uh, you you like to climb mountains. It's the same idea. Yeah, when you're climbing up the mountain. Yeah, it's a very simple premise. Either you do it or you don't. And it's, it's in, like you and the mountain. And you go through all types of emotions and moments. Sure. And some parts you're like, I'm flying. And other parts you're like, I'm dead. And you, yeah, it's you, a roller coaster. You're going up and down with it. And that's the beauty of it. When you get to the end of it, you kind of overcame those. Anyway, so the, the problem is you say, oh, we're going to get better jobs because ChatGPT is going to do the crappy ones. And really what that means is just more self-gratification, instantaneous self-gratification sure. and avoidance of things where self-gratification might be delayed or where there might be something that you've got to overcome in order to reach that gratification. And, and, and by the way, I'm not saying that this is necessarily always the case or always in, in this exact pattern or order, but... What I'm, I guess, where I'm going here is that the, it's, it's a, at the end of the day, it's about usefulness. It's about be, f- feeling being useful, and that ends up being sort of a fulfilling characteristic in your life, as you see that the effects of what you do on other people. And if uh, all of these things get pushed off to AI, and and all of a sudden AI is r- r- really good at, um taking over for us you don't necessarily want to limit or or there's going to be side effects to limiting our person our usefulness Mm. or outsourcing our usefulness and then not having the residual which is whatever the benefit is of having felt useful yeah but on the other side of this is hopefully these robots can take over the really dangerous or like mundane jobs or super repetitive and humans can be more creative in a sense and do more creative stuff yeah so i that's another one that i hear to argue but i just because something is creative i don't think that that means that it's not hard work so that's the problem i think is that there's a the 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 entire premise is flawed from the get-go 
that stay away from hard things and go towards easy ones? I guess it's not hard. I think it's just replacing repetition. But repetition is and discipline it is hard. Is, but repetition and discipline discipline is where sophistication comes from. That's that's ex experience, that's expertise. If you take yeah. out if you take out the repetition of a particular task, the amount of greatness is limited by the inability to be that disciplined. Like the mm -hmm. best player in a sport or the best expert or the best artist or whatever else it might be. Mm -hmm. The chaoticness of just sheer creativity without practice is it's almost like there's it's almost like when you walk into a retail store and they have 20 things of the same item instead of three or four. It's like the the landscape becomes too too vast that we can't we, it becomes hard for us to. Uh, zero in on where to actually uh, filter that effort. Mm. And this is why people gravitate towards, well, games are a great example. Mm -hmm. Because in, in the game world, the rules are clearly defined. Mm -hmm. And in these places, you know that if you practice this certain set of skills, you progress. Like, imagine what would be the AI version of video games? It would be like uh, Aimbot. Uh huh. Something like this. Yeah. It'd be like you're amazing instantly, and yeah. you have all the aids of all these, and then my AI is playing your AI. Right, right. And where's the gratification in that? And then what? Then I'm training, I'm trying to better train my AI. Are we even watching? What are we, spectators? How fulfilling could that be? Would that be? Yeah. I don't believe that would be fulfilling at all at all so I there's a limit to it there are like certain jobs and certain scenarios where it would be very dangerous or super repetitive where people wouldn't really gain a lot of skill just by doing what they do the, the one the one job that comes to mind is like a mail sorter you know someone who just goes in nine to five and just sorts mail you can get really proficient and, and faster at it to a certain point. But the idea of like, you know, people going crazy in post uh, the mailing services, it's like being postal or, or that kind of stuff. It's like it happens, right? It's be people are sick of their jobs. And I think if it's like super repetitive like that, then maybe we should design like an AI that can sort that, you know? You have to come up with a solution for what happens for everyone that has, in your perception, a repetitive job. Yeah. Because I'm sure there are people who enjoy that as well, right? So, I don't know, man. It's... Uh... I, I, think, I, think, I think repetition is underappreciated. That's what I think. Yeah. I, I think that people look at a repetitive task and they're immediately repulsed by it. Where there is some characteristics inside of repetition that are extremely powerful. If you think about historically, philosoph philosophical practices, mm. religion, it's all about repetition. Mm -hmm. um, uh, meditation, the, these, these type of things are about the kind of... Um, Uh, pro profound experience of uh, well, e even being able to, even being capable of repeating, like I, I don't know, maybe it's it's too probably too informed by my own personal life experience. But you could have two players in hockey, and one of them leans into the repetitious, boring nature, mm. and the other one thinks. I don't want to take a thousand shots because there's no goalie and the game isn't on and there's no crowd and it and it's not exciting mm -hmm. in that moment. They you only it's a very superficial scenario in our culture where we tend to focus so hugely on the outcome rather than the preparation because the preparation is too boring. Mm 
because the preparation is too routine. It's too repetitive. As if there's nothing to be learned inside of the repetitive nature of human advancement. Mm. That practice, let's say. Sure. I mean, in some cases, it's at, you, you have professions that are actually called a practice because of the, pre the premises that it always will be a practice. Yeah, and it would lead to like a better outcome in yeah. personal growth. It might, it might not. It might in not. the case of the two players, the one guy might shoot a thousand times and then the other guy who just happens to be particularly gifted still is the better player. It's possible. Mm. But when you get both of those things together, you got lightning. Mm -hmm. When you got somebody who can perceive the task, see it clearly, be willing to make the repetitive investment, let's say, or deal with the boring elements of the task at the same time like it's not a coincidence that oftentimes you see these extremely successful people that started out doing the mundane yeah elements of the thing they eventually got to so if you just completely eliminate let's call it the mundane and people get to skip over that portion of the experience like it's funny you brought up the mail room the mail room is precisely the example how people get their foot in the door that the mail room is like the the famous meme of of like where'd sure. you start i started it in the mail room sure or or the guy owns 20 restaurants where'd you start i was washing dishes mm -hmm. like what you end up eliminating is actually these these doors yeah to me, I just feel like the, the scary part is if someone was just there forever and there was no promotion and that's what they were just meant to do. It's just that. Like, I, I feel like there's something with the psyche that would do something to them. Yeah, but see, the problem with that is that things aren't perceived as progressive. Like, I don't know. But life is progressive. Exactly. And, yeah. and, and in an optimistic society, so is work. You can, you can prove something about your intent and about your character in one particular task, which can lead you to another task. But that's what I mean. It, it might not happen to those people. But, it, but this, is, this gets extremely philosophical. If, if whether or not what happens to you is a consequence of the universe having happened to you or you having happened to the universe. Right. To what extent are you responsible for the lack of progress in a particular endeavor? Mm -hmm. Versus, like, like, how far away are you from your next complaint? Because the moment that you allow that to transpire... You have now made a critical statement to yourself and to the universe, and I'm I was using the universe, but possibly your coworkers or mm -hmm. your superiors in that particular uh, endeavor. This is why optimism is so key and so um, difficult to quantify. Like the the. Yeah, glass half full versus empty. And and then and then how and where you end up and why. Yeah. And with to the what same position. To what extent that your outlook actually influenced your outcome. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's uh it's a tough conversation because I do feel like AI could be used for you know, really repetitive jobs as a whole. It might not be for everything, but um, yeah, for for some jobs. You get people push back against the sort of corporate modern existence and actually move towards more traditional repetitive jobs. Like go back to farming, for example. Yeah. You get people, you, you, you have and a... Some people really enjoy it. You have a push. They like the kind of mindless... Uh, I would not call it mindless. Well, if they're so like, good like, at it. Okay, okay. Have you ever heard of the meditative practi practice of mindfulness? Uh -huh. You could easily distinguish that, that as being mindless. But instead, in this particular practice, m mindfulness is the actual, the output outcome is the opposite mm -hmm. in the absence of stimulation 
or the complete focus on on one particular task, like, I don't know, washing the dishes or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's perception. It's perception. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like why? Like 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 that one task is per, sup, completely superior to the other. It's an it's a negative perception. It's like when somebody asks you to do something versus you doing it of your own volition. You just decide, oh, I'm going to go do it. So all of a sudden, it's justified and you feel totally comfortable about it. But if someone came and pointed at you and said, "Hey, do the thing," you're like, "Hey, screw off." Would I say that? No, no, no. But I'm just I'm just showcasing how it's it's emotional and it's a lot of it is societal. It's like we've all determined that like this one thing to do is more valuable than this other thing and and so forth. But like I, I see a lot of people in my life and it's completely anecdotal, but going back towards jobs that traditionally people would look at and be like, why would you want to do that? Mm. And I get curious about what that pull might be towards sort of a more traditional approach. Like if somebody wants to go and become a farmer or if somebody wants to go and become a baker or if somebody wants to go and um i don't know whatever take your pick mm -hmm. whatever uh long list of it an arborist yeah like, or a woodworker ah that's a good yeah. one a carpenter yeah and you're actually seeing those those type of content that type of content prevail on social media yeah uh because people don't and, oh here's the other one like just survival what the hell is that segment where people are just uh, building building shelters in the wilderness her calls it bushcraft yeah yeah that kind of stuff yeah S somehow somehow they're... somehow there's a pull towards a uh a more, a more simple and direct form of work, less yeah, very fundamental, less flimsy and chaotic, and uh -huh. knowing that you've actually done something, knowing that there's a like a a manifested thing because of it, uh -huh. and that it's not just this kind of. So many of us now there have these jobs which are, uh, sort of fl uh, floating around, sure. sort of, sort of, uh, like a cloud in space. In, in the sky and and it's hard to put your wrap your hands around the value of it and then if you uh -huh. do experience like my like my plumbing experience you experience an actual physical like pushing of a clog and you're like god damn yeah god damn the water it's very uh visceral holy man that water is running it's running down that pipe yeah yeah, I, I do notice that there's a lot more content going back to the fundamentals, like making a clay pot out of sand or something or dirt and um, crafting like a, a spear from a rock, you know. But see, this is this is what's cool, though, is there's two, two different ways to look at that. Mm -hmm. So you could say. Oh, the routine mundaneness of a knife maker, right? And and you might envision a giant factory, right? You might envision again, depending on your perception. Mm -hmm. uh, whoever puts knives in Walmart, mm -hmm. you don't have to do that. You could do that for five years and then start your own. You could you could live a fairly minimal life and then start your own knife company and be really low volume and crafty uh, you could picture some some guy doing samurai style blades by hand mm -hmm. at a whole different margin for a whole different audience but that guy's optimistic that guy from the jump goes i got plan it i got this part of the plan that part of the plan the pessimistic guy looks at the exact same scenario and goes i'm just gonna be i'm just hammering these uh, I'm hammering out these Walmart blades for the rest of my life. Kill me now. Yeah, I definitely do agree with you. I think, like, mindset is very important in this case. And there's obviously two sides of it. Even if two people are doing the same job. Different mindsets. Are we done with that story? It's not a story, Will. <laughs> well, this one is. 
Well, but it's it's a it's a, it's a, it's a philosophical discussion. The, yeah. This this idea of and we have a lot of those. The idea of the elimination of jobs in general, or mm-hmm. I shouldn't say the elimination, but the transfer of jobs. Mm-hmm. The transfer of jobs is not really a thing that we've at this scale been faced with. This idea that a huge portion of of human jobs in the next hundred years will be moved off the human plate. And and the concern is that so will the usefulness of humans and and possibly the need for them. I mean, that's the like sort of long term conversation mm-hmm. about it. Is that in the absence, like uh, you got this? You, what do you got? You got a universal basic income. You got a bunch of creative people making nfts and uh it, it's interesting it comes to meaning and how we determine what is meaningful and not and how hard it will be in the future to determine whether the things we are doing are actually meaningful yeah i do believe that at some point there's going to be some sort of crisis for understanding the human value when AIs kind of slowly take over, what our fundamental jobs are. But I, I look at it on an even on a daily basis, like feeling like you did something and how downhill you go, how fast you go downhill, feeling as though you're not certain if you did something that day or not. Yeah. If the goals aren't clear. Exactly. And that's the big goals and small. That's what we're marching towards. If you yeah. can't bake the bread, if you can't farm the food, if you can't. Again, these are just the examples I'm using here. Uh, if you can't craft the thing, or you can't even tell what the thing is in the end, it becomes uh, having that kind of like consistent buildup of whatever whatever po- positive reinforcement. The uh, the chaotic effect of that. Mm-hmm. On the psyche, yeah, long term chaotic effect, meaning meaningfulness versus meaninglessness, uh, in combat at all times, and somehow connected to our ability to be useful and productive. Somehow connected. Mm-hmm. Microsoft wants to launch Xbox Game Store on iPhone. What do you think about that? <laughs> <laughs> Will was trying to get me to move on for it. Was a, listen, man, it's an impossible topic. It's not the yeah, it's dude. Not, it's not the last time we're going to talk about it. We have so many of these conversations off the mic, um, and our audience like finally has a chance to kind of be in one of these conversations, like existential stuff. Uh, so, yeah, it's a uh, it's a fun exercise. Oh, it's important, I think. Yeah, you gotta make sense of uh, talk about what's going on in the world, make you feel less crazy. I I believe that. Make 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 you feel more connected, mm-hmm. actually. Yeah. Hey, 